I finally thought of a way to talk about both my favorite instrument and my second favorite anime score from 2017. Today we'll be breaking down Cinnabar's theme from Land of the Lustrous and using it as an example of why the Urhu, when used correctly, should definitely appear in more scores. This piece is incredible, from its impeccable orchestration and building to its amazing melodic writing. Yoshiaki Fujisawa really knocked it out of the park with this whole score, and I plan on doing a full Land of the Lustrous score analysis soon, but today I wanted to draw particular attention to the piece, Cinnabar. First, if you're confused as to what the heck an Urhu is, well, here it is. This is my Urhu, her name is Mei. Some quick background on the instrument, it's originally a Mongolian instrument adopted by the Chinese and is very prominent in Chinese folk music, and more recently in art music. We've also seen Urhu usage increase in soundtracks that aren't trying to mimic a Chinese folk sound, which is amazing because this instrument is absolutely gorgeous. This instrument is quite different from many of the western instruments we see normally, and man, it is probably the instrument I have had the hardest time trying to learn over the years. It has two strings and no fretboard, so your fingers slide around the notes, giving it a very fluid quality to its tone. The sound is amplified through a small box at the bottom, covered in normally python skin, Many use a synthetic version now. And this gives it a very vocal-like quality that is, in my opinion, pretty much unmatched in the instrument world. Because of this, the Urhu is capable of producing a very emotional tone and has a very rich and deep timbre. Another interesting fact is that the bow is placed in between the strings, which causes an even deeper level of connection between notes when playing. I love this instrument and could go on forever. It's just so freaking cool. But that should be enough information to talk about Cinnabar from the Land of the Lustrous score. This specific version of the piece with the Urhu appears six times throughout the show, landing in episodes 1, 3, 4, 5, 9, and 11. There is a version of it in episode 13 for a brief cue, but it is a slight variation, so I won't be talking about that one today. I'll leave that for when I cover the whole score. In all of the episodes except for 11, which I won't talk about because of spoilers, this piece accompanies moments where Cinnabar is present and is showing signs of deep loneliness. This piece does an incredible job of portraying Cinnabar and her struggles with herself as a conscious being. The use of Urhu is so strong here and portrays Cinnabar's constant cry for help and want for companionship that we see throughout the show. Let's go ahead and break down this piece then. The piece starts off with violins playing a single long drawn out note very softly. The first theme is then introduced in a very high register of the piano which has heavy reverb and cold higher EQ, showing off the sense of loneliness and depression. Strings get added in slowly, orchestration building in complexity and emotion to introduce the harmonic structure that will be present throughout this piece. The strings drop out and the Urhu plays a new theme that's a slight variation of the ones played on piano. This is accompanied by only a very minimal piano that just acts to keep harmonic structure and timing. During the second iteration of the theme in the Urhu, the cello joins to accent the beautiful melody and add a light counter melody. This second iteration of the theme in the Urhu ends with the Urhu alone, lingering on the last note. This is so powerful. It's like a voice crying out for help. It's incredibly emotional. I'm not gonna lie, this piece has gotten me emotional quite a few times, even without the context of the show, just listening to the music. After this crying out from the Urhu, there is a very slight pause, and then the string orchestra is back in full, accompanying the piano playing its main theme again, but in octaves to show a build of emotion. A crescendo in the strings and a more active accompaniment leads into and backs up the Urhu as it joins for its third iteration of this melody. This part of the piece is so powerful. The orchestrating is absolutely stellar, and everything just supports the Urhu so well. The Urhu being as vocal as it is portrays this deep sense of sadness that I think would be very hard to convey in any other instrument. From here, everything fades out into the piano. After its first interval, the Urhu joins for its last melody, very different from the ones we've seen before. Then the Urhu drops out as the piano plays its last rolled chord to close out the piece. Now that the play-by-play -play is done, let's talk a bit more about the sound and melodies used. 
there is a lot of reverb here. This is to give the feeling of space, and creates that isolated feeling that lingers throughout the theme. The piano is EQ'd on the higher side, very cold, which further cements the feelings of loneliness or loss. One very interesting thing is that for a large amount of the piece, aside from some breakout moments, the accompanying strings are EQ'd in a somewhat muted fashion. Not only does this help the piano on Urhu to stand out better, but it also shows the way that Cinnabar sees the world around her, muted and stale. This causes the emotions of the Urhu, representing Cinnabar, to shine so powerfully and affect the listener so deeply. This piece is really beautifully mastered. The building in this piece is incredibly well handled. The rise and fall of the piece fits so naturally with the melody and does such a great job of eliciting an emotional response from the listener. In the show, the cues are handled around these builds, with the most emotional parts of the conversations building with the music and creating some incredibly powerful emotional moments. Let's talk a bit about the melodies. There are technically four main melodies, but they are all structured around the same notes, especially accenting D and really digging into that D minor sound. What's cool about this, aside from the melodies just being gorgeous and well-structured, is that this is basically the perfect range for the Urhu with its strings on an unmodified Urhu being D, the lower one, and A, the higher one. The melody never dips below that D note, making it easy for the Urhu to play. This melody sits fairly well in the hands of the player and allows for the performer to really dig into the glissando and ornamentations for the right notes. This key allows the Urhu to take full advantage of its tone as well as its gliding nature. I thought of putting up all the melodies for you guys, and I still might if they're in the video, then they're in the video, but I thought it might be overwhelming. This piece is such an incredible example of how emotional and amazing the sound of the Urhu is in combination with modern scoring practices. It has so much raw emotion through the use of the Urhu, it is just so downright beautiful, and my god, the player's interpretation of the melody has so much emotion put into it. The amount of vibrato is perfect, as well as where ornamentations are placed and how she leads into each note. Reiko Tsuchiya did an absolutely amazing job playing this piece, and Yoshiaka Fujisawa did an incredible job composing it. This piece fits Cinnabar and the material in episode 11 so well, and from the standpoint of a listener of the music and watcher of the show, I don't know if I could have enjoyed this piece more. So, remember when I said I tried to be getting videos uploaded more consistently? That's still true, but, uh kind of ran into a bit of a snag. I kind of was showing signs of some health issues that landed me in the hospital for about a week last year, and so I was dealing with that. And I was trying to also make a different video. I was making a Death Note video talking about L's and Lights themes, and found some pretty cool discoveries, but I ended up having to re-record it like three times because I was so low energy, and I got honestly really frustrated because then I found something in the script, and I was like, well, I think I need to redo that. Shoot. I'm gonna have to re-record this, and I decided I'm just gonna shelve it for a bit, and I ended up making this. I'm really happy with covering this piece, and I do want to cover Land of the Lustrous as a whole uh, very soon. As always, if you want to follow me, my current thoughts on current anime, stuff like that, follow my Twitter. Uh, super exciting, I got a shout out from Kevin Pankin, the composer for Maiden Abyss, for my Maiden Abyss analysis, which was so freaking cool. I went nuts. So sick. Anyways, uh, check that out. It'll be in the description. As always, I hope you guys have a great day and a greater life, and I will see you in the next one.